Tech Motorworks once again. Um, we are Derby's BMW, VW and Audi Group Specialists. Today is a very interesting topic that we've got on this video. Um, we're going to be speaking about the BMW M3, uh, the one with the V8 engine. Uh, started manufacturing in 2007 all the way up to 2014. Um, this engine is a very, very good engine, a very powerful engine. However, there are some design flaws in this and there are some common faults which we're going to speak about today. One being in particular, the rod bearing failure. If you go on the internet and forums, there's a lot of horror stories about this. Um, the natural characteristic of the V8 engine, it's always snatching. So, as you imagine, the crankshaft and there's two pistons like this, it's constantly going up and down. And obviously these components, which are the bearings, which attach the conrods to the crank, they, they take the wear. Now, obviously what we do here at GTEC Motorworks is we fit some uprated bearings in order to obviously, you know, stop this from happening. Uh, they're made out of a better material and can handle a lot more, you know, heat and uh, they're better treated for friction. Uh, so basically today, we're just gonna show you what we do, why we're doing it, and how we do it. Follow me. So guys, the idea of this video is not to scare you off, you know, at the end of the day, this is an excellent vehicle. It's one of BMW's flagship models. It's an M3 V8. Don't get it twisted. It's awesome. But, like I said previously, there are some common faults. So if you're going to buy one, don't be scared. They're an awesome car. One, make sure they've been done, the rod bearings. If they haven't, then obviously get them done. Uh, there's a few telltale signs, guys, with these as well, which we're gonna go on to show you in a second. Um, so one one would say, oh well, I've just brought one. How can I? How can? How do I know if my bearings are going? Is there any other test without paying a lot of labour for stripping stuff and checking it? Yes, there is. Uh, what you can do is you can actually send your oil away for oil analysis to see how much lead there is in the oil. So the idea is, if your bearings are wearing, um, the remains of that, uh, so the swarf, will actually go into your oil and and you know it will be contaminate the oil. Well, the only issue you have there is, you see, we, we've done a lot of these. Being a BMW specialist, 14 years, obviously I've been in the trade. Uh, we've been going for six years. We've done a lot of these. And, and people will say, well, well I want to have lead analysis. We've had that done. And then a few weeks later, he's took it on a track day and the rod bearings have gone. So there you see the natural characteristic of the engine. This will fail unless you have got the uprated things in. That's guaranteed. That's going to happen. So oil analysis is good, but the way I would do it, if you're going to buy one, and even the chap says it's, they've been done, if there's no proof, you have to get them done, or, you know, that's it. That's the bottom line, you have to get them done. So one of the telltale signs when the vehicles do come into us is what we do is we check the oil filter first. If the bearings uh, have been uh, worn uh, or have got excessive wear on them, what will happen is obviously, like I explained before, the swarf will go into your oil and contaminate it. So if you take the oil filter off, you will be able to see that, um, you know, there, there will be some swarf in there. At that point, obviously, you can go further and, and strip the bottom of the engine take the subframe down, sump needs to come off, and then obviously you can inspect inside the sump and obviously take a closer look at your bearings. So guys, we've just got the subframe out of the M3 that we're doing the Conrad bearings on and I just thought I'd bring over the engine mount uh, on the bottom that are located at the bottom of the subframe. Uh, now an engine mount, just in case you don't know, is to hold the engine up, allows the sway of the engine um, in order to transfer power down to the wheels. Now this, this mount uh, in particular is a fluid filled uh, rubber engine mount 
Uh, and on the M3s in particular, they do have a tendency, as you can see now, the rubbers start to deteriorate and they do need replacing. Now we say on every Conrad bearing replacement we do, no matter how good they are, we always replace them. So what I've got over here is genuine BMW uh, engine mounts, fluid filled engine mounts. Now you can go for the um, non-fluid filled, you can just go for a hard um, fluid mount, but I'd recommend getting a good dental plan because they go very stiff. Again, a fluid engine mount allows movement and comfy while you're driving. If you get a solid engine mount, it's gonna be very uncomfy. And like I said about dentures and back pain isn't very nice. So we replaced them with a genuine BMW part. And as you can see, that one is long gone, uh, but we do replace them. So yeah, BMW um, manufactured part, uh, only the best here at GTEC. So we're gonna crack on, get the sump off, and we'll see you when the sump's off. Welcome back guys. So as you can see, we've been very busy. We've stripped the underneath of the engine. The subframe is now off with the steering rack. All the arms are off. Uh, basically, we're now at the stage where the sump will be lowered down and we'll have full exposure to the bottom half of the engine. Um, we're not very far away now to seeing this. So, you know, we're gonna take it off in front of you and then show you what the next step is. Get the front in. As you can see, that gasket needed replacing, and it's not letting go. There you go. So basically, the sump is now off. We have exposed the bottom of the engine. Here you can see these are the Conrod end caps uh, for the eight cylinders. So obviously the way a V8 works, on each, um, each section of the crankshaft, there is two pistons times four, which is eight. So obviously they're like this, basically crisscross. So when they're going up and down, that's how they work, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is, like I said, in the next step, we are gonna take these off, okay, the end caps. This is gonna reveal the actual bearings, the rod bearings the infamous rod bearings. Uh, then we're gonna take them out, we're gonna see what condition they're in, we're gonna show you guys, and then we're gonna actually show you what we're gonna be replacing them with. We're also gonna be checking the crankshaft for any wear. Uh, we're gonna be measuring it, making sure that it's not you know, worn. Uh, God forbid, um, if that is the case, then it will need a new crankshaft, but judging by the condition of it, it actually looks okay so far so we're going to go ahead we're going to remove these and we'll be back in a second and we'll show you what the condition of these bearings are like So we've just got the bearings out, um, disconnected the bottom of the comrods to allow us to gain access to the bearings, which I've got in front of me now from cylinder one all the way to cylinder eight. Um, now we have found that uh, just a couple of bearings have slight wear in them um, from where uh, over time it's worn down. They're not as bad as what we've seen, but you know they are they are have quite a bit of surface wear. Uh, but again, it's good that the customer said that he wants them done because then at least he knows, rest assured, that there are, they are fine and they are going to last a long time. We're going to be using the ACL um, bearings, rod bearings. Uh, we just recommend these. These are the best ones that we've used. We're going to be using some assembly lube to put them in and also BMW Genuine bolts, stretch bolts. Uh, there's a lengthy torque procedure to these, uh, which we're going to be going through, uh, tightening and loosening several times just to get um, that stretch bolt nice and in there. But yeah, like I said, that is quite a lengthy procedure. So we'll go through that later. Now, if you're just um, going through the bearings themselves, these are called a plane bearing. They're not called a ball bearing. Um, and they allow the rotation of the crank inside the uh, connecting rod. 
Uh, there's a few names for them, con rods, connecting rods, but yeah, they're a plain bearing, allow the movement of the crankshaft in there. So yeah, like I said, you're gonna see some clips of the, the wear inside, but it's good that this customer's got them done. Like I said, they're not bad. Uh, his crankshaft's in good condition. Uh, so that's all nice to know. So the connecting rod, uh, if you look at, uh, it's gonna do a little zoom in picture now. It's not actually flush and on these, uh, again, they're all, all the same, they're not flush. So what happens is, is when they come out of the factory, the con rod is actually fractured. And they do this for two reasons. It's cheaper to produce, just a little fun fact. Um, so they don't have to produce two parts. And also it makes for a better flush fit as well. You'll know that when we're putting them on, you'll see a clip of when we're putting the bearings on and putting these back on, instead of there being a line where you can see where they've mated, it's a perfect fit. So you can't get these mixed up, uh, but they do have little identity numbers on them anyway. But also for our rest assured purposes, we do number them uh, cylinder four to cylinder eight, cylinder one, etc. So we know that we're getting it bang on. So as you can see on our rig here that we've had specially made for this particular job, um, the old bearings, Liam's taken them out. He showed you them on the previous section. So now obviously these are the ACL race bearings, as you can see, nice, brand spanking new. Um, in the end caps, I've already put the, the lower bearings in. What we tend to use here is an oil-based engine assembly lubrication. Now, this is obviously just for the initial startup, so you literally just apply some on here, like this, on the inside and outside, everywhere that it's gonna be, uh, you know, contacting onto the, onto the crank, because obviously the, this is what's taking all the spinning uh, motion. We're gonna lube all these up, we're gonna get them back in the car, we're gonna go through the painstaking torque sequence, very, very big torque sequence, uh, okay, to get these right. Um, obviously, we've got the new genuine BMW bolts here as well. They're gonna be going in. Uh, then the sump gasket will go on, and then we'll basically just do a reversal. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Please watch out for more videos from GTEC Motorworks. We are, you know, gonna be lo uploading a lot more content now, and, you know, if you guys need us, remember, we're Derby's BMW, Volkswagen, Audi Group specialists. We do specialize in rod bearing replacements for the uh, BMW M3. We do these a lot. If it's just advice or anything, give us a shout. We're all over the internet. Uh, we're on the BMW forums as well. Um, so yeah, thank you for tuning in, guys. See you next time.